Yat eh. I'm from the Nearwater clan, born for the Edgewater people, my father's clan. My maternal clan is the Folded Arms clan. My paternal clan is the Towering House clan. My name is Eileen Quintana, Eileen Tinhorn Quintana. I'm originally from Denahutso, Arizona, and have moved up here to go to school and then ended up staying up here in uh, Spanish Fork area. And today I brought all these things to show students and show people that there are very important tools that traditionally in our culture, the Diné uh, culture, these are very, very important. These are what sustained us and provided uh, the things that we needed to make a living and to bring home money, to bring home food, to pay for hay for livestock, to pay for trucks, cars, rent, our houses, everything we needed to make a living. And today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about this. Now, I'm going to start out with the most important thing to me, which is the wedding basket. My mother always told me that everything that a woman has, the most valued possession, are the tools of a woman, the weapons of a woman. Way back in the old stories, there are certain things that could um, terminate our lives. Cold, the weather, uh, starvation, uh, uh, diseases, and different things like this. So to fight them with our own powerful uh, weapons, we use these tools. The wedding basket is one of the main tools. We use it when we get married. We use it for medicines. We use it for food. It can be used for ceremonies, many, many different things. And as you can see, I've got this one. I've got this one where you can actually wash your hair in. And I've got an old one that um, my husband gave me. And these are all useful tools. Now in the summertime, when you plant your garden, you plant all the vegetables, all the corn. And corn is one of the mainstays in a traditional way of life. Beans, corn, squash, melons, those are all helpful. When you plant your field of corn in the fall, you should always dry your corn right on the cob. And as it gets dried up, then you can twist this and pull the kernels off. And if you have two of them, you can bang it against each other and they'll fall off real easy. And then you take the kernels and you put them on the grinding stone. And you would take the kernels and you would grind it. This is my most valued possession, the grinding stone. The top and the bottom were ones that were saved by my mother being handed down through my line. And once you get the, the corn all crushed and, and ground into flour, then you would take this brush and you would use it to pull all the cornmeal off. And you just brush the cornmeal. As you can see, there's still a little of it here on this from the last time that we ground corn on this. Then you would take your cornmeal and you could make food. You could make a mush with it. You could use it to thicken soup. You could use it to make cakes. You could use it in all different things. You could use it for ceremony even. So that's one of the most important tools. This brush is another one. It, you, there's one that's used for brushing your hair, but a smaller one like this is one that we use 
to brush the cornmeal off the grinding stone. Another important thing is your huneshkish. This is a fire stick. And the fire stick, all these items that I'm showing you have their own prayers, have their own songs connected to them. There are stories that originated with these. And when you leave your home to go travel, you would take this fire stick and you would put it right by the door. It would stand and it would protect your house against intruders. And uh, it would also, you would never leave a baby alone. You would put this by your baby and it would help it. And a lot of times, what a lot of people don't know is a lot of these tools are just not sticks. These are powerful weapons to keep cold away. It keeps, it provides for the family, the stirring sticks. A disseam, the stirring sticks is what prepares uh, your corn. Once you put it in hot boiling water, you can't put your hands in there, but you can put your stirring sticks and you can take your stirring sticks and you can stir the um, corn in the hot boiling water. So this is very powerful, these items that, tools that we use. Now, for weaving, I also brought a loom, and this loom is standing right here uh, to weave rugs. This is one that I've got that's already woven already once on the loom, and all the tools needed for that is you would first shear a sheep, you would take the wool, you would clean it by fluffing it out and taking all the, uh, uh, dirt and the sticks out of it and then you would take the carters and you would comb the wool in one direction. I already did it with the wool that was, that's right here and by using it in opposite directions you get that that roll. The roll you want, almost looking like a, a burrito. And that would be what you would then um, spin on the spindle. The spindle is this right here. Once you have your wool, you would take this, you would attach it, and you would start spinning. And as you spin, you pull on the wool, and you're just going to spin this towards you and you're pulling on the wool the more you pull the it'll turn into the yarn and as you get done you'll just wind the yarn up around this portion right here so that's the spindle right there and then from there the process would be to dye your wool after it's been turned into yarn and then after the dyeing of the wool to the colors that you need, you, then you would go to the weaving of the rug and getting your design and everything. These are all right here and they each have a job to do. This is what you would pound the yarn down with. The etzol, that's this right here, the comb. And these tools right here are the batten. These each come in different sizes. They're each designed. I love this one. This is from my sister. And one side is smoother and flatter than the other side. And perfect edges so that you can put it into your rug. So all these have different widths, different lengths depending on where, what process you're in in the weaving. Once you get to where it's, you're almost done, you're gonna be using more narrow batten rods than you are um, the wide ones. And once you get to way at the end, you'll be using tools like this, because your, um, your wide batten won't fit through once you get 
almost to the point of closing your weaving. Uh, these all help in pulling the yarn in and out so that you can continue to finish up your rug. These, like I said, are called um, the tools of a woman. And they sustain you, they provide for you, they make a living for you. And I like to call them the weapons of a woman. They keep cold away, they keep death away, they keep illness away, and provide beautifully for your family. I wanted to share this information with you because I know that many children, my students in Indian Ed here in this area, a lot of them, their parents or the grandparents, for one reason or another, don't know some of these uh, information or tidbits of stories, origin stories. So I wanted to share that so that our youth realize the beauty of our culture and the beauty of the tools that we, we use to make a living, the beauty of Navajo teachings for both um, males, females, and the beauty of the arts and how to be able to be self-sufficient, resilient, and powerful in being able to uh, provide for your family. I hope that you learned something. Thank you very much.